ट्यूशन मोबाइल क्वालिटी ई लर्निंग एक्सपीरियंस ऑन द गो फार्म स्ट्रक्चर एंड ब्यूडेंस ए फार्म इज अ पीस ऑफ लैंड यूज फॉर कॉल्टिवेशन ऑफ क्रॉप और ब्रीडिंग ऑफ एनिमल्स Farm buildings are houses or shelters constructed mainly for keeping farm animals, crops and implements. While farm structures are constructions made on the farm site to enhance the smooth running of farm operations. Importance of farm buildings include 1. They protect animals and farm workers from the weather. They protect farm supplies, products animals and farm workers from thieves and harmful animals they provide proper sanitary environments for processing and storing farm products and they make it convenient for the farm workers to care for the farm animals we have different types of farm structures and their uses they are the production structure processing and the storage structures In the production structure we have the fish ponds the paddocks the battery cages rabbit hutches dams irrigation canals spray races crosses way bridge and fences fish ponds are earthen or concrete pits with water designed for the rearing of fish artificially paddocks are structures required for beef cattle operation beef cattle production is that aspect of cattle rearing in which the animals are raised for the purpose of providing high quality meat called beef battery cages are cages constructed using heavy wire gauze to permit ventilation from all sides Cages can be built one on top of another to form either double or triple tire cages. The rabbit hutches. The rabbit hutches are construction which vary from all wire type to the wooden type or structures. Wooden or metal hutches with wire net surrounding are widely used for rabbit rearing. Dams. A dam consists of a concrete barrier constructed across a river or stream so that the flow of water is reduced. And in irrigation canals, they are constructed to carry water from rivers or lakes to the field where crops are growing. They can be found where open canal irrigation is practiced. A spray race performs the same function as a dip. A spray race consists of a natural path between two fences. It performs the same function as a dip. Pipes from a pump are constructed at the sides, top and bottom of the narrow path between the fences, and it is connected to an overhead tank containing the disinfectant and a sprinkler. Crushes consist of two wooden or metal paddocks. Between the paddocks is a narrow passageway. Animals can be driven through the crush into a deep spray or way bridge or restricted for vaccination or a check up by a veterinary officer. The way bridge is constructed in crop and animal farms for determining the weight of crops produced and for measuring life weight of farm animals. Fences could be of metal, cement, mud wall, bamboo, wire and planks, maize and sorghum stalks. Sometimes boundary hedge can be planted. Many farms are fenced in or walled round for security. Fences are also required on farms where animals are kept. And now talking about the processing structures, we have the processing sheds and the abattoirs. Processing sheds are structures designed to accommodate processing machines, for example, the oil pan press, the grinding machines, the rice mill, etc. Why abattoirs are special structures where farm animals, for example, sheep, pigs, cattle, goats are slaughtered and butchered. They are also called slaughter houses. Talking about storage structures, storage structures include bands, 
yamban, silos, rhombos, cribs, feed mills, elevated water and storage tank, tube wells, and the borehole. Bands are a covered building used for storing grains. It is a temporary structure made on the farm for storing things like cassava, yam, hay, or grass. A barn can be constructed cheaply with sticks, mud, and thatch. The yam barn. The yam barn is a traditional method of yam storage by Nigerian farmers during the dry season. The yam barn consists of a number of vertically arranged wooden sticks made of raffia midribs. These sticks are raised off the ground and supported by living logs which are dug into the soil and additionally by horizontal sticks tied at intervals to the log. The barn is usually sited in a well-ventilated and drained area and also shade is provided partly by branches arising from the rooted logs and additionally by palm fronds. Yams are tied individually in a horizontal position by means of strings from the bottom to the top. The silos. Silos are structures or buildings prepared especially for the storage of grains and silage. Modern silos are large rectangular or cylindrical structures made of galvanized steel or concrete. They are also called elevators. Silos are usually placed on raised platforms. We have the rumbles. The rhombus is a roundish and earthen container on a raised mud platform. The top is covered with thatch or grass. The walls and floors are made of clay mud. This is meant to keep insects and rodents away from the grains. It is a traditional method of storing maize cobs or other untreshed grains like the millet, the cowpea, granite, etc. The cribs. Cribs are simple grain storage structure made of wood and wire gauze on the sides and floor with a thatch or zinc roof. It is used for the storage of maize cobs harvested with high moisture content. In this case, it serves both as a drying and storage structure. It is a rectangular and raised structure of about 150 cm in width and variable length which is made to face the direction of the wind to ensure unlimited flow of air through the produce. In this way, materials harvested early with high moisture content can be conveniently dried in the crib. The Feed Mills a feed mill is usually installed or fixed in a special house built for it. The feed mill is used to produce the food eaten by turkeys, chickens, cattle, rabbits, pigs, and even fish. This food is called feed. The house in which the feed mill is fixed is tall. In farms where livestock are kept, it is economical to manufacture their feed on the farm. The elevated water and storage tank. Water tanks, usually made of aluminium materials, are used to store water for use in piggery, poultry house, cattle pens, and for domestic purposes. In most cases, the tanks are raised with strong blocks and can be filled with water from a tap or rain. The tube wells. Underground water can be obtained by digging wells. Wells are dug in line with concrete rings to prevent the caving in of the site. The depth varies from 10 to 40 meters depending on the location of the land stable water. Water that is stored in tube well is safe for drinking if the lid is watertight and the receptacle used to bail out the water is kept clean. The safest method of obtaining water from tube well is through the use of water pumps or high suction head. Such pumps can be operated manually or mechanically. The mechanical method involves the use of an engine or electric motor to drive the pump. And lastly, the borehole. Underground water can also be obtained by sinking boreholes. The borehole is narrower in diameter than the tube well. The smaller one is 10 cm in diameter. The largest one is 25 cm. 
It is constructed with a mechanical rig which can dig up to 200 meters or more according to the distance from the surface of the most dependable water table. Types of farm buildings We have different types of farm buildings which are usually of two main types. They include the temporary farm buildings and the permanent farm buildings. The temporary farm buildings are simple buildings constructed from cheap or locally available materials from the farm. They are abandoned soon after the farmer has completed using them. They include the farm shed, the tractor or equipment house or garages, a workshop house, the nursery shed and the feedlot pens. A farm shed is a room or building used for storing farm materials, items such as feed, chemicals, tools, machineries or equipment, and bag farm products. For example, the rice paddy, untressed granite, etc. The shed roof is made of thatch, zinc, or asbestos, while the floor may be of wood, concrete, or rammed earth, depending on the type of item to be stored and the money or materials available. The tractor or equipment house or garages is located near the workshop. The shed is made of timber poles with corrugated iron sheets for the roof. It is divided into many compartments for the tractor, the plow, harrows, trailer, planter, and broom sprayer, etc., when not in use. This allows each item to be stored separately. Generally, the buildings have concrete or metal pillars in front with wide entrances for driving in machines. The other sides of the building are partially walled. A workshop house. A workshop house is a house where maintenance, repair, examination and adjustment of farm machinery are carried out. This is a simple building located not too far from the farm office but nearer to the tractor or equipment sheds. The workshop can be built with cement blocks or corrugated iron sheets. It has offices for the workers. There is a large open area with the inspection pits for the plant mechanics. A well-equipped workshop has space for vulcanizing of tires, pumping, gouging and changing of tires, battery charging and an electrical section for the auto electrician. The nursery shed. The nursery shed is a building or shaded area where trays or poly bags planted to crop seeds or tender seedlings are cared for until they are ready for transplanting to the field. The shade or shed reduces the direct impact of raindrops and exposure to intense sunshine and prevents damage to the fender seedlings at the early stage. The feedlot pens. These are indoor enclosures which are used for intensive beef cattle housing. In the house, which is completely roofed, animals are assigned to individual partitions called pens. They are provided with feed and water. The building could be constructed of any suitable material, but the pens are usually made of thick stripes of wood or planks. Permanent Farm Buildings Permanent farm buildings are solid buildings normally constructed to last for a very long time. They are made of more costly materials. The materials used in construction include cement, sand, stone, iron, rods, aluminium sheets, and planks or wood for roofing. Permanent buildings are not often abandoned because of the much money and time involved in their construction. They serve for such purposes as storing chemicals, seeds, fertilizers, products, and feeds. Most offices and quarters are housed in permanent buildings. Permanent buildings include the poultry and farm animal house, the pens, the farm store, the farm office, and the utility buildings. The poultry and farm animal houses include all buildings used for sheltering animals against bad weather, wild animals and thieves, for feeding, watering, and caring for the animals, and where animal products such as milk and eggs are collected. The pens. This is an area where animals are kept. 
the farm store are buildings where farm inputs such as fertilizers and chemicals as well as some farm products can be stored. The store safeguards the crops from losses due to pests and thieves. A store is also necessary for storing certain implements after use. They are always located close to the farm office. Usually, there are two types of store, the cold stores and those for dry goods. The cold store is for fresh fruits and vegetables, fish, meat and poultry products. Examples of dry goods include the fertilizer, improved seeds, spare parts for farm machines, etc. The farm office. The farm office is usually a simple building with many rooms for the use of the different categories of staff. It is an important building found in large farm. The administration of the farm is affected from the farm office. Utility buildings. Utility buildings include the living quarters or residential houses, the greenhouses, laboratory, security posts, farm roads and paths. Living quarters or residential houses are buildings that provide accommodation to the farmer, his family and his farm workers. It is desirable that the farmer and his workers should live on the farm. This minimizes the time spent in moving from home to farm and also this ensures that crops and animals are more efficiently looked after. The Greenhouses Greenhouses are buildings constructed of special glass or polythene materials. The glass can retain some light and heat long after darkness. They have higher average temperatures than the surroundings and they protect the crops from rain and wind. In Nigeria, greenhouses are mostly used in carrying out investigations or research on different aspects of plant growth and development. They are used for growing young plants and out-of-season plants and flowers and also for raising crops under controlled conditions, especially in scientific research. The laboratory is a place or room used or designed for carrying out scientific research and experiments by the use of apparatuses and chemical reagents. Security post or farm gate building is constructed primarily to provide shelter to security personnel who guard the farm. It may also be made to provide brief resting shelter to homebound farm staff or visitors. Additional store may be provided in the building for initial storage of items before they are taken out of the farm. Farm roads and paths. Farms should be serviced by all season roads that are maintained regularly to permit ease of movement and transportation within and outside the farm. Roads make it possible to reach all parts of the farm easily. Farm roads with well-maintained surfaces and open well-kept side drains permit steady and delivery of inputs to the different structures on the farm. Parts in the farm should be made only where they are required. Often, parts are seen across farms. These are often unnoticed until constant use begins to deepen the area. This is dangerous as such parts constitute the beginning of gully erosion. To avoid erosion, parts should be grassed. In some farms, the parts are built with laterite and in others, kernel shells are used. These parts are maintained regularly to permit ease of movement and transportation within and outside the farm. General Maintenance of Farm Structures Farm structures and buildings are maintained so that they can be useful for a longer time. In order to maintain our farm structures, the certain measures we should take include 1. We should replace worn out parts when necessary. 2. There should be regular inspection of the structure components. 3. We should paint components with solignum to prevent pests. 4. We should coat structures with aluminium to prevent pests. 5. Inflammable items, dry grasses, etc. should be avoided to prevent fire. Also, the general clearing of structures like gutters, pens, 
storage houses, cold rooms and the environment should be carried out frequently. Spare parts should be kept in adequate quantity. Broken pipes or taps should be mended and cracks on walls and floors should be patched.